Here we have another Atwood machine, and our goal is to find the acceleration of these two masses. So immediately we can come up with formulas using by considering the force acting upon these two masses. So I'm going to take downwards as positive. And first of all, you see there is a downwards gravitational force acting upon this mass. And there is also an upward tension that is pulling this mass upwards. So immediately we can write out our first equation. So we have a downward mg force minus t, so minus this tension that is pulling upwards. And this is equal to m times the acceleration of this mass. I'll just call that acceleration a1. So our goal is pretty much to find a1. And we can do the same thing for this other mass over here by considering the tension in the string. But the thing is, you should notice that the tension within the string is different from the tension in the string. So we know that in this string that I'm coloring over here, this string has a tension that is equal to t. And you can see that this string over here is exerting force upon this pulley. And you can see that this string is exerting a force equal to 2t that's pointing upwards. And because this pulley is massless, we know that the tension from this string has to be counteracted by the tension within this string. And as you can see from the setup, this string here is exerting a force that is pulling downwards. So if you have this upward force, there is this downward force from this string over here. And because the force has to be has to be cancelled out, the tension within the string has to be equal to 2t. So you see there is a total amount of force that is equal to 2t that's pointing upwards because of this string. And because of this, we know that this other string must have a tension of 2t. And then by the same reasoning, we can apply the same reasoning to this pulley over here. Now you can see that this string over here, this outer string over here, will have a tension that is equal to 4t. And in that case, that means that for this uh, lowest pulley over here, you can see that for this lowest pulley, we have two strings that is pointing upwards from both sides, and both of these strings are exerting a force that is equal to 4t that is pointing upwards. And then for this other string over here, it is attached to a mass. So within this string, it has a certain amount of tension, and this tension has to counteract the tension within uh, the tension provided by these two strings over here. So the tension within the string has to be equal to 8t so that you could counteract the forces. So that means for this mass over here at the bottom, there is a, a gravitational force equal to mg that's pointing downwards, and then there is also a tension of 8t that is pulling it upwards. And in that case, we can write out our second equation for this mass. So you can see that the second equation is equal to mg, which is the downwards gravitational force upon this mass, minus 8t, which is the tension that is pointing upwards. And this will be equal to m times a2. So let's just say a2 is the acceleration of this mass. So now our goal is pretty much to find a1 and a2. But then you can see that we have two equations, but we have three unknowns. We have a1, a2, and we also have t, the tension. So we have two equations and three unknowns. So in order to solve uh, for these unknowns, we're going to need a third equation. And as is the case for most of these Atwood problems, the final equation that we would need is that we need to establish a relationship between a1 and a2. So that will be our focus for the next step. So in order to get to that step, let's just get rid of all this stuff. So first of all, let us just consider this scenario over here. So let's just say you have this mass, and let's just say it's being pulled down by this distance. So now the mass is down here. And let's just say this distance is equal to x1. So when this happens, you can tell that this string is going to be pulled down. And as a result, this pulley here is going to be pulled up. So this wheel over here is going to be pulled up. So your final configuration is going to look something like this. So that's a terrible drawing. So you have your pulley, and then you have your string. So the question is, if this is being pulled down by a distance of x1, then how high will this pulley go up? So what is the, so let's just say this point is the center of this pulley, uh, this point is the center of this pulley, so what is this distance over here? So we can consider, uh, we can figure this out by considering the amount of string, and we can do that because the amount of string must be conserved. So the total amount of string within this system must be conserved, and you can kind of view it like this. So you have this first region over here, and after this displacement of x1, you can see that this region has received an extra x1 amount of string. And because of that, because we know that the string must be conserved within this region over here, there must be less x1 amount of string. 
So that means the original amount of string that was in the system on this left hand side uh, box over here, there was this much string. Now there is only this much string. And then because we know that on this side there is an extra amount of x1 uh, amount of string, then this side over here must have lost an amount that is equal to x1. So the amount of string that is missing from this region is equal to x1. And if you will check out the diagram, you can see that the missing string is due to the green part, the type drawn. So this yellow part, this is the circular part, they're pretty much the same. So the only part that is missing is the green part. So this green part over here. And incidentally, this green part will correspond to the height that this pulley is going to go up. So what that means is that, let us say that this uh, green length over here, let's just call it x2. So now we know that x2 is going to be equal to, so x2 uh, times 2 is going to be equal to x1. So in this left box over here, there's going to be 2x2 amount of string that is missing, and that must be equal to x1. And then from this diagram, you can see that incidentally, x2 will correspond to the distance by which this pulley will go up. So what this means after all this reasoning is that for each, uh, for every x1 that is, uh, for every x1 of displacement experienced by this mass over here, this pulley will go up by x1 divided by 2. So you can see that x2 is equal to x1 divided by 2. So if this goes down by, let's just say, 2 centimeters, then this pulley will go up by 1 centimeter. So that is the conclusion of our reasoning. So that is a very important result. So we can use a similar reasoning uh, when we try to figure out the rest of the displacement by, for these other pulleys. So right now we figured out that if this mass goes down by x1, then this pulley will go up by uh, x1 over 2. But then how much will this pulley go up? So if this goes up by x1 over 2, how much will this go up? So it's kind of difficult to use the same conservation of string argument that we used just now. So in order to find out how much this pulley will go up when this goes up, we're going to have to draw another diagram.